If I were to ask you how to memorize this word, how would you go about it? How long would it take you? Would it be easier or harder for you to learn how to pronounce it first? Everyone would have a different way to do it, but by identifying our own unique learning styles and approaches, we are able to more naturally work with our minds. Hi, my name is Becca Adair. I'm 16 years old and a sixth year member of the Great Plains Quidditch Club. Today, we will be learning how to learn. First, I will be going over the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic way of learning. Then I will cover the Gregorf method, and finally, I will cover the seven intelligences by Howard Gardner. Most of the information I will be using is from this book, The Way They Learn by Cynthia Tobias. If you want to learn more about the learning styles I will be presenting, or if you'd like to learn other learning styles that I haven't covered in this speech, you should check that book out. The first learning style category is the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic way of learning. I've known my whole life that I'm a very visual person, but I didn't know that there was an entire group of categorization that happens with the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. I've made summaries of all of these. So for the visual learning, I said by using strong visual associations, an individual is able to make connections to learn with less difficulty and remember better. So the methods of learning visually, I use all of these and they're very helpful for me. I write things down multiple times. For choir music, I'll cover up parts of a sheet with sticky notes so that I visualize what's underneath the sticky notes when I can't see it. We also can study alone very well and use paper things such as study guides and handouts so that we can visualize them when we don't have them. The auditory learning. An individual learns and remembers best by forming the sounds of words and by listening to verbal instructions. For this, I think of two parts. They learn best when they can hear someone and learn best when they can hear themselves, so themselves and other people. They learn best with all of these things. So when they hear themselves participating vocally, they can record their classes and listen to them later. They can study with someone else and this one covers both of the bases. So they're talking and they can hear the other person talking. Then they can also read out loud. The last part is the kinesthetic learners. By becoming involved physically and with motions, an individual is able to capture what is being taught. And I think of this one as if their body is engaged and moving, their mind is engaged as well. So they can study while they're moving and that'll help their brain. They can also conduct experiments because you're doing things constantly with those. They can act out in a play or they can doodle while they're in class. Those were the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic ways of learning. And in addition to learning in school environment, they can also help with everyday activities and growth. The next part, I will be going over the Gregorf methods of learning. In this, there are two main ways to learn with two subcategories in each of them. The first category is perception, which is taking in information. And then the second category is ordering, which is how you, use, which is how you use the perceived information. So the subcategories in the perception are the concrete, which is the physical world with the five senses. It's the here and now. So the key statement for that is it is what it is. For the abstract learners, it's more intuitive and not necessarily in the physical world. They're good at imagination. And their key statement is it's not always what it seems. Now that's the perception, which is how you take in the information, and the ordering is how you use the information. So for the sequential learners, they are linear and step-by-step -step memorizers. And then for the random memorizers, they memorize in chunks. So it just matters that they get to the end product. Doesn't matter if they follow all the steps to get there. These are called the dominant possibilities, and there are four of them because you won't fit specifically into one category perfectly. When I took a test, I got the abstract sequential, but one point behind that was the abstract random. So I agree mostly with the abstract sequential, but I can also think randomly sometimes. 
when I submit this recording, I'll also submit a link to a test we found online that you can take and then that will help you learn better in the end. This is the dominant concrete sequential and this person I think of them as very set in stone and they like what makes sense and, and is predictable. So you can see all of these things have to do with making sense. Um, so those are how they like things done and how they learn best. The things that are hard for them are the things that are opposite of that. So when people give incomplete instructions, for example, that's difficult because they're not as imaginative, so they don't fill in the blanks. For the concrete random, they, I think of them as the do-it-yourself type. So working alone is very important to them because they like to experiment and do things on their own rather than work with other people. So it's hard for them when they can't be independent, when restrictions are put on them, or when they have to explain their reasoning to things and form a detailed report. For the abstract sequential, this is what I am. I agree with most of these, but not all of them. We like to be pretty factual and we like to get things done. Um, so we like analyzing and applying logic and things like that. So it's hard for us um, when we don't have enough time to finish one project before moving on to another. And apparently it's very hard for us to show emotions or to think sentimentally, apparently. <laughs> um, for the abstract random, I think of this person as a people person and they bring harmony to situations. Um, and they're really good at relationships. They like things to be broad as well, so it is very hard for them when restrictions are put on them or when they have to work with people they feel don't like them or when it's not a peaceful environment. Howard Gardner's Seven Intelligences. A quote from him is, the goal of education is to better, is to help people use their minds better. And he is very adamant that these are not learning styles. Everyone has all seven of these intelligences, just in varying proficiencies. The first one is linguistic, which deals with words and styles. This one is highly valued in school. The second one is the logical mathematical, which works with words and numbers. This one is also very highly valued in school. Um, and these people like to form concepts before details. The next one is musical, which is deals with music, sounds, and rhythms. These people might learn well with music in the background. They also can learn with rhythm. So if they put a beat while they're studying, if they rap a definition, those things will be different activities that can help them. The next type is bodily kinesthetic, which is body movement control. Just like it says, these people are very good at controlling their bodies. They are also usually kinesthetic learners. They don't always have to be, but using their body helps engage their mind. The next type is spatial visual, which is images and space. These people use graphs and charts, and they're usually visual learners so that they can visualize those things but they mentally visualize those objects and dimensions. The next type is interpersonal, which is other people's feelings. These people are very empathetic and they're good at verbal and nonverbal intuitions. The last one is usually the least common, which is intrapersonal self-awareness. These people are very in tune to themselves and they're self-aware and they're also usually independent. Again, everyone has varying levels of proficiency in these different intelligences, but everyone has all of those intelligences. This is just an example I made up. This person might not be school smart or have amazing grades because their linguistic and logical mathematical intelligences aren't as high but they might be great with people because their interpersonal intelligence is really high and they're aware of their body 
and rhythms and musical things like that. A quote from Mr. Rogers, a love of learning has a lot to do with learning that we are loved. It's very important that we love learning and using the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic way, you can use that in every day. And then using the Gregoric method, you can memorize and perceive and order information to the best of your ability. And it's important to know that everyone is intelligent, even if it's varying degrees and in different ways. It's very important to realize that different ways of learning does not mean learning disabilities. Some people still have learning disabilities, but for example, if a kid is a kinesthetic learner, so they use their body and it engages their mind, they might tap their feet or chew on their pencil, things like that, that are moving their body. But if they're told to sit still and they actually do, they might not be learning to the best of their ability and it might be detrimental in the end. In conclusion, what I have covered today are the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic ways of learning. You can use these every day or specifically in school learning. Then I covered the Gregoric method with the perceiving and ordering information. And those subcategories were the concrete and abstract or the sequential and random. And you don't fit perfectly into one of those categories. You, everyone uses all four of those categories. The last are the seven intelligences by Howard Gardner. How everyone is intelligent in their own way. They might not be school smart with the best grades, but that doesn't mean they're not intelligent. Going back to my example from the beginning, do you know how you would go about memorizing this word? Hopefully you have a clearer start to that now. If you were wondering, it's pronounced flossa now senilopilification. I learned it by writing it down first and realizing the pattern, and then I was able to pronounce it after that, and that was using all of the things I taught you about today, the visual, auditory, kinesthetic, the Gregoric method, and then the seven intelligences. I, I encourage you to use what you've learned to figure out how to better use and work with your own unique mind. Thank you.